Today we're going to be taking a look at the Orange Pi 5 Plus, a new SBC from Orange Pi based on the Rockchip RK3588 processor. At first glance, this board shares a lot of similarities with the Rock 5 Model B. It has the same Pico RTX form factor, the same processor, the same RAM configurations, and it also has dual M.2 slots and supports 8K video decoding. But there are some key differences which we'll take a look at. With perhaps the most eye-catching being that the Orange Pi 5 Plus is quite a lot cheaper. The base model variant with 4 gigs of RAM is currently only $89, which is $40 less than the 4 gig Rock 5 Model B, and the top end 16 gig variant is $129 which is almost $60 less than the equivalent. So let's take a look at what the Orange Pi 5 Plus has to offer. As I've already mentioned, the 5 Plus is a Pico RTX form factor. It measures 100 by 75 millimeters. Taking a look around the board, in the center we've got the RK3588 processor. This is an 8-core 64-bit processor that consists of a 4-core Cortex-A76 processor running at 2.4 GHz and a 4-core Cortex-A55 processor running at 1.8 GHz. In addition to this, it's got an ARM Mali G610 GPU. Next to the CPU are the RAM chips. This board comes in a 4GB, 8GB and 16GB variant, each with LPDDR4 chips. This is the 16GB variant. Along the side we've got the main set of ports. From top to bottom we've got a USB Type-C power port to provide power to the board. Below that are dual 2.5 gig Ethernet ports, which allow for powerful networking projects like building a home router. Then we've got three HDMI ports. The top two are HDMI outputs, which support HDMI 2.1 at up to 8K60. And below that is an HDMI input that can capture up to 4K60. Alongside the HDMI ports are dual USB 2.0 ports. Behind the USB ports is a 40-pin GPIO header, with a speaker connector above it. Then on the opposite sides of the ports is a 3.5mm audio jack, a status LED, an onboard microphone, an infrared receiver, the power button, dual USB 3.0 ports with a USB Type-C port with display port alongside it. Next to that is the mask ROM button which is used to reflash the bootloader. We've then got a M.2 E key slot, which can be used for a Wi-Fi module as the board does not have onboard Wi-Fi. Alongside it is an eMMC storage interface that supports an optional storage module from 16 gigs up to 256 gigs. And above that are two additional ports. The left one is a real-time clock connector and the right one is for a 5 volt fan. Flipping the board over, on the bottom we've got a microSD card slot that supports up to 128 gig microSD card. We've also got an M.2 M key port with four PCI Express 3.0 lanes for an NVMe SSD up to 2280 SARS. Along the edge we've got three more ports. The left one is for a touchscreen interface, the middle one is a DSR display port for an LCD panel, and next to that is a CSR camera input. So the 5 Plus is quite a feature rich board on the hardware side. As far as software goes, Orange Pi have a number of operating system images available, including the usuals like Debian, Ubuntu and Android. They also have their own Orange Pi OS image, one based on Arch Linux and one on Android. To complement the dual Ethernet ports, they also have an open WRT image. At the time of making this video, the Orange Pi OS Arch Linux and Android image is not yet available. So I'm going to try the Debian image, which is more appropriate to compare to the Rock 5B in any case, as it's the same operating system that I used for the Rock 5B testing. I wanted to use the same passive heatsink that I used on the Rock 5B, so that cooling performance is kept equal. But unfortunately this heatsink is not compatible with the Orange Pi 5 Plus, so I'm going to be running the test without a heatsink and keeping my eye on the CPU temperature. So first up let's install the operating system. This is as simple as downloading the image from their website and then flashing it onto a microSD card. I'm using Etcher to do this. We then insert the card into the 5 Plus, plug in our peripherals and then plug in power. The first boot on Debian takes around 30 seconds to complete and it boots right into the desktop so there is no login screen. If we open up HTOP we can see that we have 8 processor cores listed which are all relatively idle. And then we've got our 16 gigs of RAM. 
First let's try play a YouTube video in the default browser. I'm going to do this at 1080p and then I'll step it up to 4K. We'll set the display resolution to 1080p. Then let's open up Chromium, then go to YouTube and open up Big Buck Bunny. I'll open up Stats for Nerds and we can then check the playback resolution is at 1080p as well. Video playback in the window is near perfect, with only a few dropped frames. And it's the same running at full screen. Now let's step it up to 4K. I'm going to adjust the monitor resolution to 4K and then reopen the YouTube video, this time setting the playback resolution to 4K as well. Playback in 4K starts off with a few issues and a few drop frames, but it seems to settle a couple of seconds into playback. It's definitely not perfect and still drops a few frames during playback, but it's actually quite usable. This is much better than the 4K video playback was on the ROC5 Model B. And if we open up HTOP, we can see that we're now at around 20-30% to CPU utilization, rather than the 70-80 to we are getting on the ROC5 Model B. Even so, Android is probably a more suitable operating system for 4K video playback, if that's what you're going to be primarily using it for. Next let's do a comparison with the ROC 5B by running the Sysbench CPU benchmark. So after 10 seconds we have processed a little over 5,343 events per second, and we get a total score of 53,450. For comparison, over 3 consecutive tests, the ROC 5B managed an average of 53,642. The Cardass Edge 2 managed an average of 51,568 and the Orange Pi 5 Plus managed an average of 53,436. So performance wise, the Orange Pi 5 Plus is almost exactly the same as the ROC 5 Model B, which is to be expected running the same processor and similar hardware. The minor difference between the two is likely just due to variability between the tests. Lastly, let's take a look at power consumption. To measure the 5 Plus's power consumption, I used a USB-C cable that supports power delivery. It also indicates the power draw through it. This showed that the 5 Plus was not running on power delivery, which would have been indicated by a PD at the top. But it runs at about 2-3 watts when idle, and this goes up to 6-8 watts when fully loaded. Thermals weren't really an issue without the heatsink. Even running YouTube playback at 4K for about 10 minutes didn't push the CPU temperature much over 40 degrees. If you're going to run heavy loads on the 5 Plus for long periods of time, then you'll probably need a heatsink. So that's the Orange Pi 5 Plus. At around $100, it's a really attractive option for a powerful single board computer with a good set of interfaces. As software is still in the early stages, it'll be interesting to see what packages are released over the coming months. Let me know what you think of it in the comment section below. Thanks for watching. Please remember to like this video if you enjoyed it and subscribe for more tech and electronics projects, tutorials and reviews.